Well, good afternoon. My name's David Pybus. I'm looking for £80,000 for a 20% share in my company. I'm a qualified chemist and marketeer. I'm an author of best-selling books of the genre, which is perfumery. And I'm an aromancer, a dealer in aromas. I'm also known by the media as the Indiana Jones of the business because what I do is look for perfumes lost in time, find them, rediscover them, recreate them, and get them ready for the market. I have a range of 15 perfumes. They are created by a billion dollar perfume company that I work for as a consultant. So they are top-notch fragrances, and we're talking A-list celebrities here. We're talking fragrance from the debris field of Titanic. The fragrance of Blue Lotus, which is the perfume of Cleopatra, which has a hallucinogen in it. You can't get it from smelling it, but I reckon that's what she used on Mark Antony and um, Caesar. I'm looking conservatively for less than a tenth of a percent of the global market, which is 15 billion pound. I've got around six routes to market, two major retail routes, another which is more prestige fragrance uh, that I'm developing, uh, home selling in America, where I have contacts, and um, internet is a, is a consideration, and finally I have a, a national newspaper, non-tabloid, that is interested in a readership offer based on the sense of time, perfumes lost in time. All I can say, Dragons, is if you work with me, you really will come up smelling of roses. Thank you. It's rare for perfumes to appear in the den. Many entrepreneurs stay clear of such a competitive market dominated by global brands. David Pybus is convinced there's a niche for his glamorous historical replicas. But can he persuade the dragons to pay £80,000 for 20% of this unusual business? Tell us about you. Where did you come from? What have you been doing? How did you get involved in this? Okay. Well, as I say, I'm a chemist. I've been involved in the business of chemistry all my life with three big blue chip companies. The last one is a billion dollar fragrance company. How long were you there for? 20 years. Right, and you left? As part of that, when I read in the year 2001 that they'd found a bag of perfumes on board Titanic, my heart went like a Bugs Bunny cartoon, and I realized if, if I came back from America with this, we could recreate it. While we were looking at that, I read that they'd found a complete perfumer's house buried in Pompeii, and I went out to Pompeii, I worked with botanists and archaeologists there to see what he was growing. While you were working for this company? Yes. David might have successfully resurrected scents from the past, but marketing expert Deborah Meaden is more interested in the potential profits for any investor. You talked about routes to market and you've got two major, yes. two major retailers on board. I'm in debate with World Duty Free, which has 23% of all perfume sales in the United Kingdom and who I teach creative perfumery to, so I have an established relationship. And I'm in negotiation with, with Boots. Boots, major retailer, where are you with them? Just really exchange of communications with what them. What does that mean? Telephone calls, you've got a letter from them? So Telephones a... and emails where they're considering it. Well, hold on, have you had a meeting with them? I'm sorry? Have you had a meeting with Boots? No, I, I, I have to say my have weakness on this... My weakness on this is I do not have an established route to market yet. I have a great product. Well, that's a pretty big weakness, David. Particularly for somebody who started off saying I'm a perfumery and a marketeer. David's unwittingly exposed his business naivety and the Dragons are immediately suspicious. Can he rescue his pitch by winning the Dragons over with the perfumes themselves? I think that's revolting. Do you? I'm sorry, but I do. The thing is, Duncan, with perfume as well, you need to let it develop. It's a bit like a Beethoven's fifth where you hear da 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 <laughs> and, you, <laughs> da, 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 and da. you haven't got the rest of the symph symphony. Yeah, I think it, it needs a dry down. Th that, if you give that, and we can't give it, but if you give that 10 minutes, smell it later, it develops into a nice fragrance. OK. Uh, when I buy perfume for my lady, I go into the chemist and I choose one that I like. Now, I don't really care how old it was, whether it was reinvented or whether it went down with Titanic. 
people have a desire to learn more about. I, I would think I would think the people who want to learn more are a very, very small percentage of the market. Wouldn't you say so? A small percentage of the market is what I'm looking for. Point what point one percent of the market. David's enthusiasm for his perfumes might be charming the dragons, but can he persuade them to invest £80,000? Peter Jones has concerns around who actually owns the scents. Do you and the company that you're looking for investment for own the intellectual property rights of this perfume? Yes. Can I, ex can I expand on that a little bit? Yeah. Is that a yes, then, and you'll expand on it? It is a yes, yeah. And, and in, in our, in the nature of our business is the following. You develop a fragrance, co-invent through a brief, and, and the business is done. If the fragrance company decides it didn't want to do it anymore, you get the formula. Do, so do is this a contractual a arrangement or a gentleman's right. agreement you have? Well, we're looking, now that I'm actually coming out of the consultancy by the end of March, we're looking at putting a contract together. By the end of March, I might have to look at renegotiating that position. Do you know, David, everybody else might have got it, but I have not got this. I'm sorry, I still Deborah, do I'm, I'm not, not understand clear, your okay. relationship. I haven't got it. Because it sounds to me like you're standing in front of us uh, trying to get us to invest into a business that doesn't actually have any kind of arrangement with somebody who were part of developing the product. Well, that contract's been done now. You know, we're putting it together. Uh, we've been working three well, years. Well, David, can you stop being so obtuse? I mean, can oh. you just tell me the terms of the contract? I don't have a written hard contract. David's been blasted by an infuriated Deborah Meaden. Is this eccentric entrepreneur's charming but informal approach to business about to prove his undoing in the den? David, I, I need to tell you where I am. I, I mean, forgive my frustration, because I think you're actually a very nice guy and you clearly know your stuff. But I can't invest in something that is a wing and a prayer that is actually not... It, it's, it's nothing. There is no legal standing, no contract. But there will and be, I'd, Well, there will be. It, there isn't. I don't know the ter and I don't know what those terms will be, and neither do you, David, and you can't stand here and say you do because you don't know what those terms will be. So I'm afraid it just doesn't give me anything. So for that reason, I'm out. OK, thank you. This is a blow for David. He has bewildered the dragons over who owns the rights to the scents, him or the manufacturers. But now, Theo Pafitis steps in to try and help clear up the confusion. I go to them, I give them a brief. I want a perfume to smell just like my old socks. Right. So I give them a, one of my old socks, they create it. Yes. Right, now, I now want to make it into perfume, because I think everyone's going to love it. Who then owns the intellectual rights to that smell? You do. I do. They would not sell that to another company. Right. That's your smell. I do. Right. How do they get remunerated? By selling to you. In volume? Yes. The Dragons have finally been convinced that David will have potentially lucrative rights within his business, as well as interest from the UK's biggest perfume retailer. Peter Jones is quick to seize the initiative. I think if... If I was to invest in your business, um, I could tell you that, that I'd make sure that you would be locked in the lab. I, w I wouldn't let you out. Um, Why and is I, that? Because I think what would happen is, from a marketing perspective, you would make things a lot more complicated um, than they actually are. That being said, I think what you've got is potentially could be, if it's positioned correctly, very, very, very successful. Because I do think people are looking for this little piece of time out of the novelty factor. Um, so to that extent, I am going to offer you half the money. But I'm going to offer you half the money for 20% of your business because I think you're going to need a little bit of support in the commercial ar arena trying to negotiate these types of contracts. Uh, th thank you for the offer. M may, I, may I consider that? W the concern I yeah. have about that is... Um is at that rate, 
at that rate, I could lose 40% of my business if, if one yep. of the other Dragon's offers the same. And knowing you guys, you always try and beat the other. So it is a concern to me, those figures, In an unexpected twist, Peter Jones has offered David half the £80,000 investment, but for double the equity originally on offer. And under the rules of the den, David must now persuade one of the three remaining dragons to invest, or he'll still leave with nothing. My original thought was that this could actually be quite valuable because if there are so many perfumes out there, you know, product differentiation becomes really important. And if you can say, well, Cleopatra used to wear this perfume, and you get a celebrity behind it, you know, and you, you do it the right way, then that might be enough to push your perfume up against the thousands and thousands of others. So it's it could believe, be very yeah. valuable. Let's say we took Cleopatra and we took it off to Yves Saint Laurent. And we said, here's, here's Cleopatra was wearing this. Why don't you get behind it, get some beautiful actress to endorse it. You know, we'll charge you a penny a bottle or, you know, I mean. Well, they could, but it doesn't, Yves Saint Laurent, as you say, they've got a stable, they've got a character. They've got a, it, it just doesn't gel with companies like this. So you think with £80,000 we're going to take on Yves Saint Laurent? Well, and everybody else. I don't believe you'll get it to market for £80,000, so for that reason I'm going to declare myself out, OK? Yeah, £80,000 to launch a, a, a range of perfume is not enough, so I wish you luck, but I'm out as well. Really? David is on the brink of disaster. His only chance of salvaging an investment now rests with retail magnate Theo Pafitis. I'm going to ask you to just spend 30 seconds, no longer, right, without talking. Right, in a minute, when I say start, I right, really think carefully now. This, this is an important question. OK. Is there anything else that you can think of that's going to tip me over the edge to say yes to you? that's going to alleviate my concern about actually getting this product into the market. Okay, in the retailers that I'm talking to, I think I can develop both of those retail situations. I just believe that from the nature of the business and from the relationship I have at least with one of them. I would have to put more money into point of sale because that, you know, if you, there's 30 million people going through Heathrow. You've got to attract their eyes uh, with, a, with some sort of display. So I, th I think that would be the nature of the promotion. Right. Have I not answered that well to you? I'm sorry. Have I, I think heard? that's the best he answer you've given all bloody day. It's very good. Oh, answer. thank you. <laughs> and on that basis, I'm going to give you the other £40,000 for 20%. So you now have an offer. Are you accepting our offer, David? I think it would be good working with you guys. Yeah. Is that a it, yes? Yes, it's a yes. You got a deal. <laughs> Thank you very much. An unpredictable investment, but also a popular one, as the Aramancer who bemused the dragons walks away with an £80,000 investment. Mind the step. Well done, Theo. Well done, Theo and Peter. Goodness gracious me. There was something in that perfume, Theo. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Indiana Jones, we're going to go on some journeys with him. Yeah. It was, yes, I hope it isn't the Temple of Doom. I am flabbergasted, David. I didn't think you had a chance halfway through that. They were tearing their <laughs> hair out. Can you just tell me the terms of the contract? Are you pleased with the offer? You've given away a big chunk for £80,000. I think I've part sold my sale, but this might have been, as was said, the last chance saloon. This, if this is going to happen, it's going to happen with, with dragons. And I've got two great people to work with. Are you accepting our offer, David? You think you'll get on with these guys? You're going to be able oh, to work yeah. with them? My promise is that I am confident I can have a deal that will make them comfortable about this whole thing of, I own it, 
the company support it. If they're not interested, I get the formulae. It's going to be a fascinating one to watch. Okay, well thank you done. very much. Cheers.